Good morning, everyone. So my topic today is uh, continuous integration practices on Zephyr upstream. I myself has come from NSP semiconductor. So some people may wonder, as a chip company, why would you use some cloud or Docker technologies? The mainstream technologies used in chip is uh, mainly in CI or the develop ops. So this is the abstract of my speech. We will adopt some open source Docker's and then to uh, put them together via some glue script. And then we will have some like uh, components and, and some hardware to install or deploy the system. So based on our experience, we can build such a CI system with um, minimum supporting resources and uh, high reliable quality tracking and uh, can also make the test uh, available after five minutes. For, for Zephyr itself, it has a shippable platform as the CI framework shippable. It is not public available, so that means um, it is not possible for customization or for general users because uh, license is required. And also, it is very hard to dynamically change the test sets. And uh, also, you will find that um, a lot of the test uh, script or test uh, stuff will be mixed in the same uh, Git repo. This is uh, actually not allowed because when we release a pair to customers, we do not want to expose the underlying layers or some of the unnecessary stuff for users. And for test code, it is not in very good quality. So because it is a kind of commercial version, uh, so if uh, you want to have the develop ops uh, architecture to connect to such a commercial version will make some troubles. Even if you have some support from the companies, um, it is actually will cause more problems. And also as a chip maker or as uh, the board maker, what is uh, the key issue is uh, for shippable, um, it cannot run on the real board. You can only do it on simulator or emulator. So if you know simulator or emulator to maintain an on-call is a semi, uh, simulator is easier. But if to realize the CI, it will take more efforts and more time than doing the test on the board. So that means uh, if just to do some basic checks on the simulator, a lot of issues will happen on the real board. So this problem will have deep impacts on the real application's quality cycle, life cycle. So usually, while we are establishing a cloud architecture, we need to take user case into consideration first. So today's user case is how to upstream the BSP. So our user case is we will have the upstream task, and then we will do local debugging, do some local function test, and then we will generate a pull request. And this pull request will have some integration test. And after the integration test has been completed, then we will finish the uh, upstream. So this is a standard user case. If you have any questions, you can interrupt me at any time. So based on the previous user case, we will have some requirements from the user case. So the first is uh, 
test on request. So that means there will be not a specific test set. The test set is uh, based on the programs you are going to develop. So this test is on request. And the second is um, we will use common and user-friendly technologies. That means it doesn't require a very tough learning curve to learn some different technologies or difficult languages. So that means you will have easy access to the technologies which can be used in your programs. And the whole um, invocation process will be stateless because you have a lot of tasks to run. You need to set up the board. You need to run 100 cases. And for example, if to be exaggerated, you need to test your apps in more than 1,000 boards. So that means if it has a state, you need to switch from one state to another state. So that will require human intervention. Then it will require a lot of human efforts to maintain. So that is why we require a stateless process. That is, as long as you send a simple request, and then you will get what you want, you do not need to care about the, the process. Wait a minute. So based on the user case requirement analysis, we will come up with a system level requirement, which include, first, we need to have a system to configure the test scope. And the second is we will try to adopt open source framework. And also, we need to have a task scheduler to make it stateless process. And also, we need a reliable flash mechanism. For example, if you want to flash, you need to have uh, some equipment to control your board. So that means um, once you have flash on a program, whether it is successful or not, so it needs to be reliable, and also it needs to be developed dedicatedly, and also we need to have the result process because uh, we think that you can develop any apps you want, and uh, the test um, a process, either it is from the signals to judge the result, so that will reduce the limitations for our developers. And uh, last but not least, we need to have a storage uh, system to store the logs. So what we are using is a FTP Docker. So that means for the test results, we can store it in all the uh, in the Docker's. So this is the architecture of the CI system. There are two layers. One is the in user interface, and the second is the s s server's layer. So all the servers are um, transparent to you to users. Um, and uh, what we have uh, used um, is a centric user, uh, user uh, interface, and uh, where the blue ocean Docker to track all the servers and to get the input from different servers. And the, the one in the middle, the binary documents, and the, the SRAN log, we will put it on the servers. So such kind of architecture is based on our requirement analysis. And uh, these are the dockers which we are using. One is 
the Jenkins Docker. We are using it for CI system with database, and we have a FTP Docker. We also have a Zephyr build Docker. So all the compilation is uh, realized via the Zephyr build Docker, and also we have a Task Queue Docker. So while you adopt open source framework, it's better to write less code or customized framework because for open source there will be uh, a lot of uh, um, input from outside and its lifespan is very long. So if you have created some new frameworks that will lead to a very complex system which is difficult to understand. So it will take long time for you to explain to the others why you do it like that. And the deployment of the whole system will become very simple. We need a SCM system, either it is GitHub or Bitbucket. And uh, then we can uh, build a local cloud or rent some cloudy ECS. And on the cloudy ECS, you can deploy all Dockers. Then we need a flash machine. And then for our board, it is supported by PyOCD and then get the logs via UART. So the whole process is very simple, nothing advanced. For cloudy ECS, we can get open sourced, or if we get very clear request, we can get some other solutions, but it depends on the evolution of your program. And the next is something special because if you glue all the open source stuff together, you need to know how to glue them together. So this is about how to connect dockers. Um, and uh, some are suggesting using IP tables to use the IP or socket communications. But after our analysis, we think that it's not necessary to use the big data. We can use the Docker shared volumes. That means for all Docker, it is to be mounted with the same volumes. So that means it can be shared in one PC. And uh, the interoperation of uh, Dockers, you can use uh, Docker exec or to use the uh, mount for each Docker container. Once you have mount that node, all Dockers will copy the function from one container to the other containers. So all will be sent via socket. So from this, we can optimize the interoperation system. And uh, there is a concept of uh, convention over configuration. So that means once you have uh, defined the convention, it is a convention, and uh, it will be very high efficient for practice. So another thing is uh, we have mentioned we need to test, to establish a test set. If you have uh, uh, studied the Jenkins pipeline file, you will find that um, for all the CI systems, um, shippable, durable, it have the pipeline schema. So we hope all developers do not need to learn the schema. So that means it's necessary for us to develop some simple codes. For example, if developers want to have a test, then we just need them to know what they are going to test, what is the test route, as to the compilation, as to how to write, how to run the log. They do not need to know that. But for Jenkins, 
you need to control the whole process. You need to define the setup, define RAM, and define how to get the result. So we have developed some script. As long as you where the apps is, you can run the script and generate the pipeline file. You just need to define what you want to test. So you only need to have the knowledge of YAML file. You just need to know about the overall structure of YAML. YAML is a very popular and easy to understand grammar compared with SML and Jenkins. It has a lot of advantages. So you, if you need to have a local file system, I really recommend you to use that. So we used uh, YAML's uh, customization because it doesn't uh, allow include or exclude. That's why we set up an uh, additional layer so that we can and do some basic calculation on the board and the overall system would be uh, scalable because in YAML you ha have to use a script and you need to use specific grammar. All these things is included in the script so you just need to include them. And the next is about the flash system. I have said that if you want to have building development or development of any boards, you have to customize your program because we are a chip uh, supplier. How do you program? Nobody else would know. We need to provide a framework to any user. We have user interface programs. We have also developed PYM CUTK. This is a tool to program all our company's chips as supports IR, Kyo, GDB, and MCO, Oxperso. So we can call the command line of these systems. And you can also have double check after download. And you can also use JLink or JBug to reset all the functions. All these things are included in the script, and it's already open source. After all these uh, defined processes, we can complete a whole set of BSP upstream process. Th that will be two parts. One is manual, the other is automated. For a manual part, you just need to develop the program on your branch and do your own tests and then create a pipeline file. You just need to define what you want to test, the functions of your development, what kind of testing needs to be done, and then you can add that uh, to the pull request. And for the pull request will be assigned to SCM Jenkins trigger. All this will be done. And and Blue Ocean will trigger a test request according to this and generate build command and the build command will automatically upload the image to the FTP and then we will have a run command and then pull a binary and operate on the board and then send it to the Jenkins and upload the test log to the server and the user will receive an email notification or any other notification you define to inform you that the test is done. So this is an example of configuration. Within this example, you only need to do three things. First, you need to inform where is the kit, where's the kit, and then you need to define the regular compression and then what is the name of the test file. You only need to do these three things, very simple. When the test is done, it will create such a report. If you are familiar with Jenkins Blue Ocean Pipeline, horizontally, it means the sequential and the other Vertical direction means it's being done simultaneously. So you can define how many uh, build can 
be least in parallel, and you can also define the relationships with each other. So if it's past it, you will see a, a green mark. If it fails, you can see a red mark. So this is the log from Blue Ocean. Some uh, tricky part because we are using URL to replace the, the storage method. So the Jenkins is only storing the URL. It will not store the test result in the database. So we can reduce the burden to the database. And similarly with the, the log in the lower part, we just put the URL and we just inform about the test result. If it is false, you need to check out the log. You just need to link through the URL, which is also um, reducing the load for the database. So these are the benefits of using the system. For every pull rest, we can do that on real board. And the test scope can be customized by the original developer. Because you are the developer, you generate the feature, you would know what are the things that need to be tested. But of course, regression tests uh, can run for all the, the known cases for uh, the other things you can customize yourself. For the whole process, it's a uh, stateless async. You just need to send a pull request. Then your duties are done. You just need to wait for the result. You can switch to other tests. You don't need to care what are the other interventions you need to do. It's not necessary. You don't need to learn many things. This is the best part of that. Because for a developer, they need to focus on their projects. If it is for the bottom line software, they just need to know. They don't need to know how the cloud system is structured. It's not necessary. So you just need to link three things. First, you need to have a basic doc knowledge, which takes about one hour, and then Git. And then you also need to uh, understand some simple YAML sch schema. YAML schema is also very simple. It takes only about 30 minutes. So we don't need to have manual maintenance for the whole process. It, this is very good because operating on a stable open source architecture, and we are combining everything together in a very rational way. You don't have many things to do. So only when you have more demands, you need to duplicate the system. The benefit of Docker is that you just need to expand it. So we use conventional configuration. When you need to have more Docker documents, you just need to set up your naming rules. You don't need to do all many other things. I've said that if you don't need to uh, have a hardware scaling, it takes only about five minutes to expand the setting. So these are the future works that will be done. Zephyr is an open source uh, tool. So its purpose is to ice uh, 262 evaluation. So all the, the parts should reach 100%. We have a progress. You can use in GDP to get all the coverage data and have real-time analysis. Because only on real board, you can run all the test cases and do coverage cases. In simulation, it's very difficult because it's not possible to simulate all the COC. This is what we are going to do next. Many users want to get the test status of the boards instead of just seeing the bugs we're reporting. They want to know about the, the boards on different LTS, whether it's stable, whether it can pass some tests, whether they can use it that way. They need to have a test and maintenance system because Zephyr is using benchmark test real. So our next action would be bring our test reports and test 
I/O and combine them together. And this is a Zephyr's working group. So we're going to open all the scripts. Basically, that's all for my part. If you have any questions about DevOps or Zephyr, you can raise your question now. We still have some time. We still have five minutes. Please. So you cannot add it any time. You can add because uh, uh, Jenkins can allow extra node. You just need to add IP. That means you still need to do that in the interface. Yes, it has backend UI. We call that API. You can operate at the backend. You can add a node there. So these are a ra random nodes. Uh, these are the nodes for the physical machine. You can also have uh, the nodes for the virtual machines. My second question, uh, during the commission when it's stuck, is it possible to enter some PV2C? How do you enter that? Because for every machine, it's running on the Docker. If you want to do the debugging, you can uh, log in onto the server and to see the actual state of the server in the log. So actually, there's no authentication control. You can see everything. There is some control. If it is the machine, you need to uh, turn on the authentication. For the end user, they don't want to have uh, the authentication control. It's difficult to control because normally we want to have authentication because we don't know what the users are doing. We don't want users to do something because we want the system to be transparent. You don't need to worry that we have done something wrong because we have provided all the logs to you and it's very it's easy to see that in the log. Because if we're uh, making the system, we're doing the same thing as you. We're pr uh, providing the makes uh, command lines. I understand. It's very difficult to balance, right? Thank you. I want to ask you, you said that the user can go to the specific nodes for debugging, like EAC, and you can go into the container. Is that safe? If I give you the authentication, you will be a trusted user. So that means that not everyone can have that. So you need to manually apply for that. Yes. Actually, we have considered about the CI system. Our initial purpose is that what the developers are doing, and we will just uh, follow suit, and we will just provide the command lines to you. So there will be nothing intransparent. The only difference is the machines doing things and uh, humans are doing things. We don't want to have an artificial intervention. If we open source that is because we have done a lot of tests. We can ensure it's reliable. You can trust that these modules have very high reliability. For you, you don't need to doubt about any issues brought by our system. You can replicate the, the same thing. So there are no new problems caused by that. So we don't need the user to debug that. What if the user wants to add a new test case? It's very simple. In your PR, you just need to create a pipeline file and inform you about the debugging path. I mean, 
if we add some test uh, files, the environment is uh, different, and we can't do any adjustment. Because for a typical case of Zephyr, it's not possible to have different environment. If it is inconsistent, you won't be able to enter the Zephyr because you can only use the CMAX uh, con control method. The other methods wouldn't work. I mean, yeah, I'm talking about test. So when you are running the test, um, when the board <coughs> was uh, downloaded, so if you are going to write a script, then you can judge. That means I will give the log to you, and then you, you can judge based on the log whether you pass or not. But uh, sometimes the log is uh, <coughs> uploaded where you are. So if there is some issues, needs to use some G tag to debug. We suppose that uh, it shouldn't be fixed on the interface uh, layer. Otherwise, you'll get baggage, uh, garbage out after garbage in. I have a question for Jenkins. Um, from your slides, uh, the test case is running invisibly. Uh, or running in parallel. So um, for the master, uh, is it like kind of uh, overloaded? For the Jenkins itself, it has the load balance. It depends on the cores of the CPU. If you have two cores, then you can have two cases to run. And then if you have 16 cores, you can have all the 16 cores enabled. So if the task has already gone beyond the extreme of the master, then it will just wait there, wait autom automatically. So that is in Jenkins' build. When doing the execution, it cannot control the boards. So what we done is why we have the task queue. So we have used the server server to generate a task queue and then put it in a program machine. Then the program will tell the ta task queue that uh, the last one has been finished. And then we will have the next to run. So that will make the whole process stateless. Any more questions? If no, thank you.